I've been asked to say a few words to you now, and it's indeed a privilege for me to receive this award from all of you, and from all of you who have been, who have graduated today, it's a privilege for me to share this special day with you. I think that your certificates really matter. And when I say thank you to all of you who have considered me for this singular honor, I would also like to thank and pay tribute to all your parents, because it is the parents who have made it possible for all of you to be here, and I would like to suggest we give them a, rap a big round of applause. <laughs> the influence of our parents is huge. I have the privilege as well to say that my father came from Kronstadt and therefore Free State has been part of our heritage as a family, which of course is, is very special. But I've been asked to talk a little bit about leadership and to first of all say to all of you that your certificates matter. Don't let anybody tell you that they're not worth something. Whether it's been your matric certificate or whether it's your certificates of today, this is a great institution and your qualification matters. Congratulations to all of you. When we look at the question of leadership, part of the challenge that we have is we see leadership as either something you want, I can be president, I want to be president, or as something that is somebody else. In my view, both of them are wrong. Leadership is about each and every one of us exercising that sphere of influence that everyone has. Every one of you who have graduated here today has a sphere of influence, isn't it? There are people who look to you. You have come through, you have qualified, you have your, your qualifications, you'll go on and get jobs, which we hope is the case. That has to still be another challenge. But the reality is you exercise that, that leadership. And we need to distinguish leadership between the office that you bear and the personal authority you bring to that office. The office for either it's the president, the governor, the minister, the deans, that office has authority by its very nature, irrespective of who occupies it, isn't it? The challenge that we have is we want the people who occupy that office to recognize two things. First of all, that it's temporary. It does not belong to you. You're put there because others want you to be there and think that you can fulfill a service by being in that office. And if you confuse the office with your own authority, the, the problem becomes is that we think that that seat or that chair or that office belongs to us and we do not want to let it go. We are there to, as temporary occupiers of that office and the challenge for people who occupy office is to ensure that the office is better when they leave than when they came. Better not because it's better decorated or because you earn a bigger salary, but because you have done your job of service that goes with the authority of that office. And ideally, you want the personal authority and the office authority and the office accountability to come together. It doesn't always happen, but that's why we emphasize governance and accountability to make sure that those of us who do occupy office make sure that we are there to serve, not to be served. The second thing I would like to raise is that you don't come to holding leadership positions simply because you want to. Leadership, real leadership, is given to you by others because they recognize your integrity, they recognize the path you want to travel, because you express their own aspirations. And therefore, it is conferred on us as leaders to respect the wishes of the people who give you that trust. And the critical question that we face today is a breakdown of trust, not just in South Africa, but globally. It's been a breakdown of trust between people and the elected governments. You can see the crisis that has been around the world that has been because there has not been uh, a, a value system that has respected 
what is expected of those in leadership, whether in government or in, in public companies or in private companies. Um, so that the challenge that we have is a reflection of leadership that reflects our integrity, what we stand for, and that we are able to recognize that leadership requires a few things. There, it requires that we have courage. Courage not just to stand for what's right, but also to stand against what's wrong. It's easier to stand for what's right, much harder to stand against what's wrong, because that usually has much bigger consequences. Both are necessary in leadership. It is not only the good things that you do. It is about how you live your life. And part of the world, for all of you, is don't expect life to be fair. It's not. And if you're going to wait for it to be fair, you're going to have a long wait. The challenge that we have is to recognize what is it that we can do to make sure that we do the best we can. And first of all, I want to say to all of you, and you will have seen that in your own work at this university, that there is no substitute for hard work. If you want to be in, uh, the top of your game, you have to work hard. You have to know your subject. And in the challenging environment that we're in, you actually have to be better. In the introduction of me, it was introduced that I was the first woman governor in South Africa. I'll tell you a little story about that. I won't take very long. Every country in the world has a central bank. Some have more with one main one, like the United States, but it's not common. So however many countries there are in the world, that's how many central banks there are. Out of that total, which is around 186 or 190, around that number, there are 17 women in the entirety, right? That counts the fact that the first advanced economy woman governor is Janet Yellen at the US Fed, and she took office in February. So out of the whole 17, do you know that we have five in SADC? So there's only 12 in the rest of the world, which is a reflection of South Africa and Southern Africa's commitment to the advancement of women. And it's a privilege to see so many women who have graduated here today. It's hard. And as I said, don't expect it to be fair or easy. It's not. You're just going to have to be better. Okay, every one of you. So if we want to look at it, other characteristics, because all of you with your qualifications are going to go into positions where you exercise authority and leadership. And I want to end with this question. Leadership is also about listening. And when you listen, it's a mistake we all make. We tend to dismiss what is said depending on who says it, or to respect or listen to certain people depending on what, who is saying it. And it is something that we need to find a way of listening to people irrespective of who is saying it. So because why do we have confidence in some people and not in others? Partly is because we think they hear us. We can disagree, but if I feel that you have heard what I have to say and can give me an irrational argument as to why it doesn't, or you don't agree, I'm quite happy to respect your judgment. But if I dismiss you because of who is saying what, you find that you actually go around in quite a circle and you don't hear and you miss very important things. So part of your challenge going into the workplace is to find ways in which people respect you because of your integrity, but also because you're fair and because they have confidence that you will hear them. So that you listen to hear them, irrespective of who is saying things. And therefore, Part of it is, you yourselves will know that if a person is not authentic, if they're not true to themselves, if they're opportunistic, you know it. If somebody has contempt for you, you know it. They don't have to say anything. So the challenge that we face is to recognize that you build a reputation, you build a career, you build uh, your own uh, sense of, of, um, of, of well-being and contribution by remaining true to your principles, to your integrity, to the authenticity that you are, and being authentic in who you are. And finally, I want to wish you all well. It is a tough world out there. 
Your qualification goes a long way to opening the doors, but it's not sufficient. Part of that opening of the doors with that qualification, with that certificate, is how do you add value? What is your approach? What is your attitude? And you'll find that attitude, and I'm talking about attitude being a positive factor, not a negative factor, okay? We, can all, we all know attitude, right? I'm talking about an attitude that says, I want to make a difference, I want to contribute, I can add value, I come here with energy, with interest, and I am available to be part of the team that's going to work, you'll find that that opens far more doors than anything else, is having the right attitude. And therefore, I want to wish you all well. You've done extraordinarily well so far. Uh, the challenge is out there for all of us to ensure that South Africa is a country that grows, that we all have a role and a place in, and that it reflects the extraordinary talent and human and humanity that are South African citizens. And you are going to play your roles to make South Africa the country of our vision of a future in which we all, it belongs to all of us and that it is a thriving, prosperous, growing society because that is what we're going to make it. So thank you again for your very kind contribution and thoughts to me and to all of you who have graduated here today. It's a particular privilege to be with you today and to share your special day. Thank you very much indeed.